Welcome to BSRM Presents Straight Talk. I am Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan, and I'm joined in conversation today by Ms. Rubaya Ahmed, animal rights worker and the founder of Avayorno Animal Welfare Trust and founder of the Bangu Vegan. Rubaya, great to have you on the show today. Thank you for having me. So first, I want to congratulate you on 10 years of work with Avayorno. And if I could say, I mean, it seems to me that uh, Bangladesh is a really tough market for what you're trying to promote here with Avayorno. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it used to be. When we first started out, nobody was really worried about animal welfare per se. Yeah. But I think it was more because there was no platform to express their concerns. Uh, because as soon as we started, we, the support poured in and from just animal lovers, from the government, from my community. So I think, um, and of course now, um, in 10 years, there's been so many changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, we were the only animal welfare organization in Bangladesh. Uh, but now there are so many. And uh, I remember uh, when we first started out on our Facebook page, every day there would be dozens and dozens of messages of people requesting us uh, to save animals, to rescue animals. And uh, so we, that's fascinating. I mean, what you're saying is that this sentiment was always there. There just wasn't a platform yes, for people to yes, express themselves. I believe so. Yeah. And of course, it's more refined now. And yeah. people are more aware of what they can do as an individual, as opposed to seeking support from an organization, because that's always, you know, uh, that's not the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, and if you, if you always rely on somebody else to do it, then, you know, you don't get enough done. So we always encourage people to take action yeah. uh, and try to guide them. And mind you, we also learned um, along the way. So as we learned, we also tried to share our knowledge. Now, on there, yeah, there's a, there's a, I don't know, a, a perception perhaps it's an incorrect one, that animal rights is something which, you know, people, urban Bangladeshis, you know, middle class, upper middle class, they're more, they care about more, but your average everyday uh, man or woman in the street cares about less. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a misconception? What's your experience shown you over well, the last uh, uh, 10 years? Well, rights is different from welfare okay. concerns. So mm -hmm. rights is, you know, when you're talking about rights, you're not talking about welfare per se, because okay. somebody who believes in... How would you in, define the difference? Um, so rights activists would not uh, um, support killing of animals of any yeah. sort, would not support exploitation of animals of any sort. So for, for instance, meat consumption yeah. would be a violation of animal rights. Sure. But a welfare activist or a welfare, a welfare worker would say that, okay, even if you kill an animal for meat, mm -hmm. you must make sure that the animal is treated well. It's done in a humane life. way. Yes, in a humane way. Sure. So um, I think Bangladesh may not be ready to hear about animal rights as yeah. yet, uh, but welfare uh, concerns have always been there. I think that's true. I think when you have a predominantly agricultural society <laughs> yes, where people absolutely. live in close absolutely. connection with their animals, sure, right. you know, you use them for food, but there's a absolutely. certain connection there, isn't there? Yeah, and you go to and talk to a farmer in the villages yeah. and they will tell you that, you know, if you treat your cows well, they give you more milk. That's right. And there are farmers who sing to their cows. They, you know, yeah. in the winter months, you'll see little goats in jackets and sweaters. So these are not, they're not, labeled as animal welfare and they're right. not you know, when you packaged think about in it, that that's way. What it yeah, is. But yeah. it's always been there. Yeah. And you go to the villages, you always see at least a, a cat or a dog that's part of the household and they get yeah. scraps. So of course it's, it's uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's over the years the, the way we look at animal welfare has changed and it's evolved in many ways. Yeah. But I think the primary concerns have always been there. Um, I would hate to say that even in the villages now, we see less and less um, of those uh, practices happening now. And mm -hmm. uh, so we have to reintroduce the things that happened there all along. Yeah. But um, I think overall, there's been a, a great improvement in the animal welfare uh, arena. Okay. In Obviously, hand in hand with animal welfare work is you've worked tirelessly to promote veganism here in Bangladesh. How's that been in terms of uh, getting an audience? You know, veganism, um, I think I'm a good advocate for veganism because I used to be one of those people that ate meat three times a day. 
Sure. So if anybody tries to tell me that, oh, it's, it's not possible to give it up or why would you do it? Yeah. Uh, I personally, you know, when I first started working for Abharno, I was hell bent on stopping dog culling. Sure. Um, you know, I came to know that they were killing dogs and uh, I wanted to take down all the people that were killing dogs. And then just just dawned on me that, you know, here I am on a crusade uh, to stop dog culling um, and to take down the people who are paid to kill dogs. But I'm paying every day uh, to kill other animals for my own uh, greed. So it just sort of um, started bothering me more and more. Yeah. And it became a natural progression from, you know, dog work to just animal welfare in general, because yeah. I think... My work primarily was very much focused on dog welfare. Yeah. So I, I also look at it like that. You know, I, when I talk about veganism, it's not something separate from animal welfare. No, it's welfare. a natural outgrowth Absolutely. of what you're doing. It kind of Absolutely. makes sense. And I, mean, I think for many people, most of us, I would imagine, who are neither vegetarians nor vegans, yes. the moral argument in favor of both yes. is not lost on us. Right, and right. I think you know, for most people, it's like you know, we understand uh, where that position is coming from. And what I also like about uh, your approach is that, you know, it's not hitting people over the head with it. It's yes. understanding where they're coming from and saying, okay, why don't we say have meatless Mondays? Yes. Okay, we're yes. not going to, we'll do things little by little. Yes. I think you, my, you know, my you friends catch, would disagree yeah. with uh, that hitting over the head with that <laughs> part, but yes, absolutely. And this yeah. is something I believe in. And I think people don't change their behavior because it benefits somebody else. Right. They'll change their behavior when they feel that it benefits themselves. Yeah. So we, we look at veganism from the health ap approach, from the health aspect, from the environmental aspect, for, from animal welfare. But what we, you know, there is the moral point of view, and mm -hmm. then there is also the other practical point of view of, of promoting veganism. And the moral point of view, and it's, 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 we'd like to point out all the double standards and the hypocrisy that we see in this society. Right before mm -hmm. the Qurbani Eid, you'll see so yeah. much outrage on social media. Yeah. People talking about, yo, oh, we hate how these cows are being killed. We hate how these goats are being killed. And the next day, they'll post pictures of Kalabhuna and this and that. So mm. it just, you know, it, it, it boggles my mind that, you know, when did we become so unaware? It's, it's the hypocrisy of it that, that uh, you know, I think yeah. it's time. We don't need somebody else telling us. Sure. We just need to look within. Well, the other thing which I think is really interesting yes. is there's now a massive sustainability Yes. argument. You yes. see, in my sense is that the world, Bangladesh included, is going to move far more in the direction of vegetarianism and veganism, not necessarily because, you know, the, the moral argument, yes. but because actually we're finding that it is environmentally massively Absolutely. unsustainable. Absolutely. And you I've see? heard poultry farmers yeah. expressing concerns mm -hmm. that how this will not last for another 10 years. Yeah. The whole world, and of course we are 50 years behind on everything, we always, the late wants to catch up, right? So when you're saying veganism, when you're promoting veganism, people think that this is something that only the Western world is doing yeah. and this is not something we will have to do. And um, we are actually, the, you know, Bangladesh is the lowest meat-eating country in the world. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we don't have the problems that the meat-eating countries are so, facing. So let me ask you a question about veganism. Yes. Because what about, is there, can <coughs> there no, be no environmentally or... Um, sustainable or you could say ethically sustainable way of, you know, let's say free range eggs or milk, which is produced in a, uh, you know, not, a, not, you know, not a sort of a, a corporate mm. dairy farm, but, mm. you know, by individual farmers. Is that not more acceptable? Yes, but for that to happen, for that to work, people mm -hmm. would have to reduce their consumption significantly. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, not enough people are willing to do that at sure, this point. Sure. Um, you know, and when we say reduce significantly, we're talking about maybe once a month. Yeah. Um, I remember growing up, we didn't eat meat every day, well, but right. now Absolutely. we're eating yeah. meat every single day, three times a day. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and that's, I think that that's why so many people are going vegan to sort of compensate for the ones who won't even reduce meat consumption. Sure. Um, and factory farming has, is too far gone right now. Yeah. And, uh, when I talk about uh, factory farming in the livestock ministry, they are so excited about importing all these modern technologies. Right. The carousel system where the cows are hung upside down yeah. and in a carousel and their yeah. throats are slit um, 
with an automated knife yeah. as opposed to manual killing, which is mm -hmm. also un-Islamic, by the mm -hmm. way. So, you know, we're, we're really wrapped up on increasing our meat production, poultry production, because also we are also hung, hung up on the fact that Bangladesh is the lowest meat eating country. Yeah. And we feel that, and that oh, should be that should be a feature, not a bug. Yeah, yeah no, but, you mm. know, the government sees it as, as a downfall and they see that, oh, OK, we're not able to meet the protein needs of yeah. our nation. Yeah, I mean, so, I think typically what you see is is is, is um, nations become wealthy as they yes. become richer, they tend to eat more meat. But it's not as though, well, you know, if you don't eat meat, it means you're poor. That's not Absolutely. necessarily the case. Absolutely. Yeah. It's quite the opposite, and yeah. it shouldn't be. Yeah. You know, um, I saw a, a quotation somewhere that, don't ask why expensive, uh, you know, healthy food is so expensive. Mm -hmm. Ask why bad food is so cheap. Right. And this is what's happening in the U.S. You know, mm -hmm. you get a hamburger for 99 cents, but to sure. buy a salad, you have to spend five pounds, five dollars. Sure. Uh, my roommate <laughs> in law school, he was a vegetarian for a while, but uh, he says that uh, when McDonald's started their 59 cent hamburger, 79 yes. cent cheeseburger deal, <laughs> it priced him out of the market. <laughs> I Absolutely. always remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like so that, and that's what's happening in Bangladesh. And yeah. it so scares me. You know, every time, you know, Burger King is coming to Dhaka or KFC is coming to Dhaka, I just cringe and I cringe more and more when I see so much excitement sure, around that. Of course, yeah. So we don't understand that it's suicidal for us to allow the entry of these uh, you know, low cost meat uh, yeah. joints and overall promoting meat consumption. Yeah. It's suicidal for our health, for our environment, for our economy. And uh, this is not me saying, this is the world economy. Well, that's everyone it. saying. Yeah, it. absolutely. Anyway, on that note, I think we're going to take a break. Uh, please join us after the break. This is Zafar Saban presenting Straight Talk, and I'm in conversation with Rubai Ahmed. Thank you. Welcome back to Straight Talk. This is Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan, and I'm in conversation with animal welfare worker Rabaya Ahmed. Rabaya, welcome back to the end. Um, I wanted to talk about something you alluded to a little bit earlier mm -hmm. in the show. I think for animal welfare work in Bangladesh, the wheels really touched the road around the time of Bakrid, which we had mm -hmm. not so long ago. And that's around the time you have a lot of emotions run high mm -hmm. and uh, on both sides of the argument. Um, now, I understand you're making a movie addressing this issue. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that movie? It's, it's a short documentary, yeah. and the idea came about when uh, a few years ago. And uh, in Oporno's page, we have about 30,000 followers. And yeah. of course, you post a cute picture of a dog. So many people comment and like it and everything. Mm -hmm. But um, every time we posted anything remotely close to farm animal welfare, yeah. everybody would just shut us down. Yeah. And the most common argument is that it's un-Islamic to promote meat uh, reduction of meat consumption or veganism. Um, there's a widespread misconception that veganism, vegetarianism, all this is very Hindu and Indian uh, philosophies and culture being promoted in Bangladesh. No, right, of course. I mean, Islam permits one to eat meat, yes. but it certainly doesn't yes. require you to. Yes. I, you know, it, it was very interesting. I, I went to an Ayurveda workshop yesterday, and the Ayurveda teacher said that Ayurveda tells you how to consume alcohol yeah. In, in very specific ways, Ayurveda tells you how to consume sweets, when to consume sweets, what kind of sweets to consume. But at the end of it all, in fine print, they'll say, but it's better not to consume it. Yeah. In Islam, meat consumption is allowed, but it's yeah. not encouraged. Right. So when we talk about meat consumption within the Muslim community, people think that to be a good Muslim, you have to consume meat three times a day. And that's interesting you say it's not encouraged, because most people believe that it is. No, it's but not. There's, there's it, no it's scriptural not, there, there's so support many for hadith, that position. No. Um, killing an animal is not taken lightly in sure. Islam. Sure. And there are all sorts of rules that you need to adhere to when you're killing an animal for meat. Um, you cannot kill one animal in front of another one. You cannot even sharpen the knife that you kill the animal with in front of the animal. Mm -hmm. These rules are there because Islam recognizes the, the animals feel and that they understand. 
um, halal slaughtering or halal meat, the concept is also widely misunderstood. We think that okay. any Muslim, if they say Bismillah and slaughter an animal, that's halal meat. It's far from it. There are so many other rules that you have to adhere to. Yeah. So would you say actually the philosophy behind halal yes. is a philosophy of humanity? Absolutely. That's what Absolutely. it's really about, being humane Absolutely. in the killing of the animal, Absolutely. which we're about to eat, and really taking it seriously yes. and respecting it. Yes, with humility. If you, yeah. if you must kill an animal, you must do it with humility um, and, you know, fr from a spiritual angle, not the way that it's, it's been distorted. Um, forget yeah. spirituality. I mean, the festivity that goes around Qurbani and the bloodbath, Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's grotesque and it yeah. is not at all Islamic, it is not mm -hmm. at all halal. And of course, I'm no Islamic scholar, but I grew up in a very religious uh, sure. home and my dad used to be an Islamic scholar, he passed away. So I, I learned how to dig up information on, on what issue. Islam says. Sure. I know the methodology to do right. the research. So I have done my research and uh, it is in no way uh, permissible to hurt an animal, to kill an animal in a way um, uh, that I is... I think you're absolutely right. I've also studied Islam yes. uh, uh, at university, and yes. my mother was an Islamic right. scholar, in fact. Right. And, um, and I think you're absolutely right. Everything I know about Islam in terms of the accent on humanity, yes. the accent on humility, yes. it makes a lot of sense. And I would actually imagine the message you're sending yes. would in fact have, um, it, it would resonate with people here yes. in Bangladesh because yes. you're not saying you can't do qurbani. No. You're no. not saying that you can't eat meat, but you're saying that within those boundaries, there's a way of doing it, which is actually, frankly, more Islamic. Well, um, uh, yes and no. Mm -hmm. But the documentary that we're making, it's basically to, um, to share the... Mm -hmm. uh, teachings of Islam, what Islam says about yeah. animal welfare in general. Yeah. But I personally feel, and this is, uh, you know, this is not only my opinion, I believe that the way we do it now and the overconsumption and the, and the showmanship that goes around meat consumption in general, sure. or Qurbani in general, um, there's just no way to do it humanely anymore. Right. There's no way to um, apply those halal standards anymore. When you have one street in Baridhara mm -hmm. and you have 20 animals tied to different trees, how can you possibly kill one animal w w without doing it in front of another animal? No, you're, you're doing it in front right. of I mean, 10 that animals. Should be, that should be discontinued. And in yes. fact, if I'm not wrong, we actually have laws in place which Absolutely. says you're not supposed to yes. uh, sacrifice so, animals yes. like this in Bangladesh. So in theory, yeah, hmm. I mean, w I would rather settle for humane slaughtering. Yeah. But at this day and age, I don't think we can do human slaughtering, human transportation, humane farming mm -hmm. anymore because we've taken it too far already. Mm -hmm. So right now the you know the only But I think I mean I think I see your point, but I think if we're gonna win this argument, yes. you sort of have to do it in, in stage by stage. Absolutely. So my Absolutely. sense is that the, you know I yes. I've also, you know, um, presented similar arguments <coughs> in the newspaper where we've also talked about having separate places designated yes. for slaughter. Yes. Hygiene is a big yes, issue. Yes, absolutely. You know, absolutely. hygiene and welfare, yes. of course, and like I said, in, in, in simple humanity. Mm -hmm. I think that argument will resonate. I think people will buy it. I yes, mean, and uh, I think younger generation, yeah. they're, they're turning it more and more away from uh, this practice. Yeah. Um, and this, this also tells you that people in general, yeah. they're not in support of uh, cruelty. Yeah. You're not the, most of these people, if you tell them to perform the qurbani themselves, they will not be able to do it. Sure. But somehow when it's taken out of their sight, when it's done in secrecy, when you're paying somebody else to do it, the, mm -hmm. the entire thing sort of disappears and it's just the steak that you're looking at now. You're not thinking about anything else. Yeah. So our, our um, uh, you know, agenda is basically to get people to start thinking yeah. that, okay, the meat that you're eating, yeah. Don't eat it mindlessly. Just question where it came from yeah. um, and see if you're okay with it. See if yeah. this is something you would like to participate well, in. Well, I, mean, I think that's it. I think just getting people to think about yes. these things yes. is a great first step. And my sense is that, you know, all children yes. are naturally, in some senses, vegetarian yes. or vegan. Yes, uh, because, you know, my, uh, my son Shamil, he's five and a half. Yes. And, you know, yeah, he eats... We smush tuna fish up and right, give it to him. Right. But he doesn't actually know yes, that he eats yes, animals. And yes. I remember one time we were reading a book yes. where there's a cat who's eating a fish and he thought it was so funny. Yeah, He's like, yeah. fish? But you don't <laughs> eat fish. 
<laughs> yes. No, you same know? thing. You know, I have a three-year-old nephew, and I yeah. always tell my friends that, would you ever take your children to a slaughterhouse? Yeah. You're feeding animals to your children, but would you ever take them to a slaughterhouse? But you would happily take your children to pick, uh, you know, cherries or apples or mangoes. Yeah. That, that what would does be that a, tell you? Yeah, so what does that tell you? So it's, it's, it's really trying to question yeah. yourselves. But, and, but I think, you know, I mean, I think as far as this argument goes, you're on the right side of history. There's no question in my mind that we are moving towards a world yes. in which animal welfare is respected and we're moving towards a world where you know people are looking at more sustainable ways yes. of living. They yes. understand that the way in which we've lived, let's, and it's actually it's a relatively recent, we're talking the worst excesses have happened in the last hundred yes. years or so. Yes, absolutely. Okay? And we've just done so much damage yes. you know, societally, environmentally in the last hundred damage, years. Yeah. Irreversible damage nevertheless we're going to try and reverse yes. it. And, you know, we also need to keep in mind that this is not only about animal welfare. Yeah. We, we, if we talk about world hunger, if we talk about human welfare, yeah. you still have to move towards veganism at some point. Well, exactly. This is yes. it. And I think that's the argument that's going yes. to win the day for people because even people who perhaps don't care that much, yes. they do understand about self-preservation. Right. Right. And, and honestly, with, uh, you know, close to 8 billion people in this world today, you know, and it's going to be 10 billion one day. It might even yes. be 12 billion yes. one day. There's really no other alternative. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you very much for being with me today. Thank you. I think this has been a wonderful conversation. Keep up the good work. You're fighting the good fight, doing the right thank thing. Thank you for having me, sir. And thank you for joining us. This has been BSRM Presents Straight Talk. I'm Zafar Subhan. I've been in conversation with animal welfare worker Rubaya Ahmed. Please join us next week. Thank you very much. I understand. I understand.